What's up, everybody? Thralls Mellow here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we are back with yet another retro review, and one that I've been wanting to go over for, well, a lot of reasons, just because this band sounds like one of my favorite bands, and more specifically, it sounds like my favorite album by one of my favorite bands, but we'll get into that. We are going to go over the Lone Full Length from Burial, Relinquished Souls. This came out in 1993. Again, this is one that I cannot find a specific date in 1993. But hey, at least we got the year. This came out on West Virginia Records, which is in Germany, which that's just kind of confusing. This band formed in 1991 in Turnusen, Netherlands. I, I, I at least got Netherlands right. I'm pretty sure of that. That we can pronounce. Yes. <laughs> the rest of it, no. And speaking of not being able to pronounce things, I'm going to go into the original lineup, which uh, started off with Pierre Van S on bass, Cyril Daner, D-H-A-E-N-N-R, Daner. Anyway, he was on drums, Werner Versigip, oh my god, I don't even know how to say that one, V-E-R-S-I-J-P. Who puts J and P together like that? That's just, it feels clumsy. Anyway, he was on guitars. And Stefan Verdurn, and he was on guitars and vocals. Now, this lineup would actually record their Frigid Cold demo between February and March of 92. It was released in March of 92. Again, I don't have a specific date on that, but uh, that's what happened. And not too long after that, they signed with West Virginia Records. Now, West Virginia Records was a small German label, but they were home to some notable acts, namely Holy Moses and Obscenity. And I know we've definitely gone over obscenity on this channel. And we've uttered obscenities, too, so, you know. Constantly. That's why we're always under review. <laughs> <laughs> uh, day in the life. Now, again, this is another one where I think the history is a little bit muddled, and I was really looking around in terms of getting a timeline on here. But this band was sort of marred with a whole bunch of issues. Uh, not too long after the demo, uh, Pierre, Werner, and Cyril all left the band. Now, I don't know if they all left at the same time. I believe Pierre and Werner actually left around the same time before they were getting down to recording their full length. And Cyril was still in there for a little bit, I believe. And the archives seem to mention issues with the drummer as one of the main things. So I'm going to go ahead and say that Cyril was still in there for a little bit uh, after uh, Pierre and Werner left. Fucking drummers. Yeah, they're the worst people, really. Yeah, we're, yeah. So Peter Dees would join on guitar and Erwin Van Dorselier, sorry, <laughs> uh, joined on bass. And, well, all right, the issues with the drummer, I guess, still continued. So somewhere during this time when they were getting ready to record, I assume that Cyril left. And it wasn't a pretty one because no one says they have issues with the drummer unless they're actual issues. Unless you're Metallica, then you've constantly had issues with the drummer. Namely, he just hasn't gotten any better. So to remedy the situation, Stefan actually contacted an old bandmate from his previous thrash band, Lycanthrope, one Renzo Van Peck. Maybe that's how you say his last name. Maybe it isn't. Either way, he stepped in as a session drummer to record this album. And again, they already had to overcome a lot of issues just before getting in the studio. So yeah, things were already kind of difficult, but they managed to get this album out. And I gotta be honest with you, this album sounds a lot like Leprosy. And Scream Bloody Gore, and a small myriad of other bands. <laughs> Throw in Spiritual Healing too for good measure. Yep, opens up with the second coming, riffs and tremolos right out of the gate. It's the second coming of Leprosy. <laughs> I mean, like legit like the riff work the guitar harmonies even down to Stefan's vocals all of this really sounds a lot like death like to the point where you could almost do a pepsi challenge like a blindfolded listening and mm -hmm. like unless someone absolutely knew every single second of leprosy which i know there's a ton of you out there i'm kind of one of them you would assume that this was leprosy. Like, it sounds so spot on. Or if not, you would be easily convinced that these were death B-sides. Yeah. The entire record, all these songs, are just filled with big, chuggy riffs, tons of tremolo groove, and, like, it never stops. They just, one after the other, after the other, after the other, just keep throwing riffs at you. 
Yeah, honestly, there's not a bad riff on this album. And I mean, a lot of it is due to like great pacing, great dynamics. It's still very like old school. In fact, like this came out in 93, but this sounds like it came out in like 1989. Like it's mm -hmm. very rooted in that old school Floridian sound. Again, namely death, but I would also throw in like obituaries, cause of death, like very similar. And also bands that definitely liked death a lot, like Cancer, Morgoth. Yeah. And, you know, on a thrashier side, there's definitely some stuff that kind of sounds like early Sepultura, too. Production wise, we're talking gnarly, evil guitar tones, barked growls, yells, sometimes pukes. Very natural sounding drums. Like for me, this is what I think would be the sound of the drums heard live. The punchy snare has just the right amount of reverb on it just to, to make it sound like you were standing in, say, a club or something to watch this band. And the drum work, I mean, here we go with more death comparisons. Like even the fills and the rhythms, the accents, there's a lot on here that sounds like Bill Andrews. Like just in terms of like some of the transitions, like failure of technology is a big one. Like there are sections on there that kind of sound like the transitions and pull the plug. Mm -hmm. Not a bad song to pull from, but like it's it's so spot on. Or the song Pitiful God, there's a ton of tribal beats within the rhythm section, very Igor Cavalera. Yeah, uh, they even the galloping blast that occasionally pop up in here, because this isn't like a super blasty album. In fact, a lot of this, in terms of its faster stuff, is a little bit more akin to thrash metal. Like mm -hmm. it's still got like a sinister edge, but there's even like some kind of slayerish nods, like the end of Traumatized has sort of that perpetual little slowdown that mm -hmm. happens at the end of Altar of Sacrifice off of Rain and Blood, which, I mean, I absolutely love that album, love that song. And there's these really heavy triplet chugs on Frigid Cold as well that are almost kind of similar to Raining Blood. Now, because it sounds so much like Death, honestly, it does kind of set itself apart from at least like two of the more well-known Dutch death metal bands earlier on, you know, Pestilence and uh, Gorefest. It doesn't sound like those bands at all, mainly because, well, I mean, both of those had a very distinct sound as well. Like, Pestilence definitely had a lot of death influence. You can definitely hear it, like, Consuming Impulse, like, 100%. But this one, like, it, it is so spot on. Like, again, it, it's kind of crazy listening to this because we're listening to death right now in the background. I mean, we were listening to Leprosy earlier. We're on Screen Bloody Gore now. We're mixing it up. It really doesn't matter because a lot of this is just so spot on with that. And if it's not found in, in the death like riffs, another spot on comparison to at least most of the groovy moments in this, and there are tons of groovy moments, the second coming, no existence, frigid cold, all have these awesome groovy pockets, but it's very akin to obituary. So when it's not death, it's obituary grooves. And honestly, like, I mean, they, they do it right. Like, I mean, yeah. it, it's so well done. Like, even down to, like, the clever transitions, which there's a lot of cool isolation in mm -hmm. terms of the transitions. Like, they'll isolate a lead or a riff, even a drum pattern. Hell, you even get an isolated bass run on the opening of Untimely Demise, which is an absolute banger of a song. Yeah. And towards the end of Frigid Cold, where you get that isolated bass tapping section. Yeah, there's even some cool bass melodies that pop up in Pitiful God at the end, too. This album kind of keeps opening up as it goes too. Like it starts off very raw and in your face and vicious. Like it really doesn't even show off the technical aspects until you get down to failure of technology, which is a huge standout on this album. I love that song. In fact, I knew that song the moment I heard it. I was like, man, I've heard this a ton of times. Probably the same with most of this record. Like as it went on, I was like, oh, I've heard this, oh shit. Like, it is really good. Failure of technology, though, is a beast. Yeah. The awesome shreddy leads and, again, those isolated transitions where they'll just do, like, a quick run of some just killer shreddy melodies. And, man, the guitar harmonies on here. They they reek of Chuck. But that isn't a bad thing. Like, you know, me saying this sounds like leprosy is never going to be a dig. Right. Like, <laughs> ever. But, I mean, it is just like really well done like this could have been like a gruesome album like if you told me this was gruesome's new album which that band is beyond transparent about their love of death i would probably believe you another cool thing i like about this too is this was in a time period before breakdowns were necessary to sell a song like they exist in here but they're in little pockets again in failure of technology in traumatized in 
no existence in frigid cold like they all have really awesome breakdown moments but they're not dominating the song yeah honestly like they just kind of break off into just like nice grooves and it doesn't matter where you're going on here there are going to be awesome riffs like i can't think of a bad riff on here in fact one of the cool things i liked about this album is every song opens with pretty much an immediate hook yeah they just launch into a great riff or at least like tease a cool melody and kind of just get right to it like when it comes down to the pacing of these songs there is really no waiting to get to a solid hook and they frequently repeat great riffs on mm -hmm, here mm -hmm. and you know, across the board i think the guitar work is exceptional and as for the leads, like the leads kind of start off as like, you know, you're more standard dive bombs and such. Like you do get some spots of melody, but towards the end of the album, the leads really start opening up and start getting a little bit longer and a little bit more lavish. Yep. No Existence and uh, Inner Hostility both have really actually killer leads that aren't just squawks and dive bombs. Like very tasteful, especially the one in Inner Hostility, which is a beast of a song anyway. Uh, that lead really stands out. Honestly, like a lot of the lead work you know, towards the back half of the album started reminding me more of spiritual healing mm -hmm, than leprosy. Mm -hmm. You know, I was almost kind of waiting for uh, Stefan to fuck up and yell altering the future, uh, <laughs> but he didn't. Uh, he yelled some other stuff that sounded just like Chuck. But yeah, the lead work keeps getting progressively better and I feel like the intricacies of the songs start getting a little bit more lavish and again, like a little bit more towards spiritual healing. And as if this record wasn't cool enough between the thrashy moments and the groovy pockets and the breakdowns and the squawky leads and all just the nonstop constant riffing, it even gets more heavy. Inner Hostility, again, I know I've mentioned that song a bunch, but it's one of my favorites. It's got death doom pockets. It's heavier than shit. And they keep playing on that too. Like they'll abandon it for a minute and get a little bit faster, but then they'll drag you right back down with more doom. And I like that about this album. Like a lot of it is very full tilt, aggressive. You know, it, it's just pretty much running at you full steam. But there are some cool moments where it gets a little bit more sinister and dark. But Inner Hostility is one that is a big standout, namely because it's probably the slowest track mm -hmm. on the album. It's definitely more groove laden, but the melodies themselves, they sound way more haunting. And there's some like elongated screams on there that seem just super appropriate, even points where they overlap. You know, that's just something that kind of contributes a little bit of atmosphere to this, because I mean, a lot of this is just sort of a downhill run, but man, it's it's a fun one. And is like kind of straightforward, meat and potatoes, like death metal, this still kind of is that, but it's kind of flashy in a way. Like mm -hmm. there's enough cool riff changes and great lead work and like fun tempo shifts that it kind of keeps you, you know, really locked in on this. Yep, at its core, it's old school death metal, but it doesn't mean that they can't make it entertaining throughout. There are so many riff changes that take you so many places other than old school death metal. There's, you know, again, nods to thrash, nods to punk, nods to doom. A bunch of, like, really sweet off-time riffing. Uh, the off-time riff in Frigid Cold is badass. But again, it's like eating meat and potatoes with a bunch of rad seasoning in it. As for any negatives about this, <laughs> I feel like... I feel like if I talk shit about this album, I'm talking shit about death. Like, it's it's that close. Uh, but that would kind of be, maybe, the only negative is it is so spot on and transparent about, like, what it wants to sound like that, yeah, no, it, it, it kind of feels like a knockoff, but it doesn't sound like one. Like, this sounds like on the level of quality that death would release. This doesn't sound like a cover band or a band that is just solely influenced by them, but they can't quite get all the you know, intricacies of death. I mean, if you think about it, I know a lot of our viewers, you know, some of us here in Thralls are as well. A lot of you guys are musicians. And when you start a band, why is it that you start a band? It's usually because you have listened to so many records and you're like man i really like this sound and so when you go and start a band of course you want to emulate who you sound like at least to begin with they've only got one record why not emulate what they love yeah i suppose like in terms of timing like death metal in 93 had definitely kind of moved past you know this old school sound how even death did so it does come across as maybe a little bit dated for the time that this was released. Like if this was released in like 1989 or 1988, yeah, no, this would be probably on the same level as Leprosy in terms of like, holy shit, this is a kind of a game changer. Yeah. But that is 
legit my only gripe, and that really isn't a gripe. I'm still praising this and praising it for sounding like an album I absolutely love. So overall, I'm gonna give this four stars, bordering on a four and a half. Like, honestly, this is kinda on the same level as Leprosy, and that's like a five star album for me. Like, that's one of my favorite albums, and this sounds so much like it. Like, they got everything down, but the fact that it also kinda keeps changing as it goes on like this isn't leprosy across the board it's leprosy and definitely a lot of like spiritual mm -hmm. healing as well because the leads start getting better and there's really cool melodies and tons of harmonies on here and there's not a bad riff on this album i i dare you to find one they're not there they just don't even bother looking for them just listen to this album this is an awesome one and done and really shouldn't have been a one and done. I'm, I'm kind of curious what their next album would have sounded like. I agree. Maybe it would have sounded like death. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I mean, it could have. But yeah, this album is absolutely incredible. A real underrated gem that probably gets overlooked in, well, I would say like the Dutch death metal scene quite a bit. But I mean, also kind of overall, like this may not have gotten like properly promoted even across the pond here. And again, this band was kind of short lived at least for this time period. But yeah, if you've never heard this album, check it out. If you love death, you will probably love this. Uh, for me, I gotta give it four and a half. <laughs> There's nothing really wrong with this album. Dude, the riffs are killer. The transitions are awesome. When they groove, they groove. And another cool thing about them is even though they jam quite a bit, like they never forget that they're trying to pummel you. Like it always goes back to the beat down. They, they do a good job to circle back around and bring riffs back around and end on a strong note. There's no time in this album where they don't end on a strong note. They keep it entertaining. They go from, you know, again, death metal to thrash to punk to doom. Like they encompass all the bases and just make it a really entertaining listen. They do such a good job, even though it may sound really familiar familiar and they may wear their hearts on their sleeves so to speak as far as what their influences were like they did a good job at it um, if i had to pick a band that sounded like death leprosy era it would be burial it was a great listen i had a lot of fun uh if you're fans of not only death but like old school sepultura obituary um morbid angel as far as like tremolos are concerned you know you like the bolt thrower beat downs you're gonna love this record i'd recommend checking it out and we also went over the Frigid Cold demo just to kind of get a roundabout feel for at least their early sound. And honestly, it's kind of just spot on with this. Yeah. Granted, it was a totally different lineup, minus Stefan, uh, right down to like all the nuanced riffs. Uh, the drum work's pretty much about the same. Like these guys were locked in really early on. And honestly, listening to the demo, like they sounded like tight already. Mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. Like, it didn't sound like a first demo. It sounded like an older band had put this out. And yeah. like, yeah, no, we've been, like, practicing the living shit out of this for years. So, if anything, I think that shows how confident they were, at least, well, you know, the ones that stayed in the band, you know, were going into the studio. But, well, now we got to get into what happened. Well, what happened was they broke up, like, almost immediately after this album was released. And, again... Uh, at least the archives cites drummer issues. And it definitely wasn't Renzo because he was only in as a session player. But yeah, the band sort of split and went their separate ways for a while. I don't think Stefan really did much musically for a while, but I know that Peter went on to form a band called El Nino, not to be confused with Il Nino. Uh, they were a progressive death thrash act and they only hung out for a little while. Uh, the fascinating thing that I found out was they had a DJ, uh, which is, you know, but I can't really process that in a, you know, a progressive death thrash act. But, you know, whatever. I guess that's kind of progressive. I haven't listened to it. I don't know. I might now out of curiosity. Renzo went on to form a band called Mind Link, which I believe was more of like a hard rock band. Like some metal elements. He actually got some other former members of uh, Lycanthrope with them. And they all kind of just did their own thing for a little while up until 2001 where the band would reform. Uh, and they would get at least three of the original members, Stefan, Irwin, and Peter, to all rejoin. Now, Peter actually switched to drums since Renzo didn't come back, and Stefan was just on guitars. He no longer was doing vocals, which was kind of weird because he had absolutely awesome vocals on this yes. album. Yeah. So as a second guitarist, they recruited one Stephen Vryswick. I'm sorry. 
Uh, there's a J and a K at the end, and that's just confusing. Uh, he played in bands like Collateral Damage, Polluted Inheritance, and they got one Sebastian Tileman. Tileman. Sorry. Uh, I he, applaud you. For, I'm trying. For trying. I yes. am trying. I'm I'm on the struggle bus right now, <laughs> all the way in the back of it. Uh, and he was their vocalist for a while, and I could not find anything other than uh, this band that he actually did you know vocals on. So during this time in 2006, they actually made a demo, uh, Resurrection, which if you can find it, uh, man, I'm impressed because it's only got like a hundred copies. It was on a CDR, and I couldn't even find it on YouTube. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I went looking. But this reunion was, well, I mean, not necessarily short-lived. I mean, they went on another seven years, broke up in 2013. But then they ended up reforming in 2015. And uh, Stefan may have been, like, in and out during this time, because I noticed there were some other members that came in as, I don't necessarily know if they were session members, but they were listed as members. But either way, I think this band is still pretty much together, at least according to the archives. Uh, they are listed as active, and I think at least still three of the core members are still a part of this. So there is a chance that they could record another album. Who knows? Do it. Yeah, or at least a chance to maybe play some shows or festivals or whatnot. I don't really know how much they actually play in terms of like live shows. And believe me, I look at a lot of festival dates, and I would <laughs> probably notice that one. Like, ooh, hey, well, where's that second album? I mean, like, MDF would... Be a nice place. And I mean, it seems to be the place for <laughs> bands that want to reunite and play a one-off show. Come to MDF. We go. We go all the time. We love MDF. Go to MDF. I'll buy a shirt. I will also buy a shirt. But at least this one, I feel like there's at least a chance because they are still together and, you know, hopefully they're playing shows because this album is awesome. And yeah, no, it, it sounds just like Leprosy. It sounds just like Death. It also sounds like a lot of other cool bands. But, I mean, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, and in terms of, like, flat-out death worship albums, like, I think this is, like, low-key one of the best ones I've heard in a while. But yeah, that is it for this band's story so far. Who knows what happens in the future? But, uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun to go over. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. It is also on our channel. But thrallsmetal.com is where you go to get Thralls Metal stuff. We have new shirts. We have old shirts at a discounted price. And we even have hats. So if you're looking for any of that stuff, click the link down below. And always a ton of stuff going on here at Thralls of Metal. Of course, you know we've got reviews galore coming. It's going to be an absolutely stacked year. Maybe not quite as stacked as 2023, but we'll see what happens. The first quarter here is looking to be pretty insane. So yeah, we've got reviews coming. We have the Black Dahlia Murder ranking coming. We have uh, all sorts of offshoots as far as different segments are concerned. What's John Jamming is going to come back finally. Thank God. But yeah, we couldn't do it without you guys. In fact, I don't know if we would want to do it as at least much as we do it without you guys. You guys kind of help make Thralls of Metal into what it is. We appreciate you. We thank you so much for that. Nick, tell them more. I mean, you guys are right. I mean, you know, you're, you're pretty cool. No, seriously though, you guys are absolutely awesome and you guys really do keep us going. I, sorry I haven't got to the comments here lately. I've been recording a lot, but uh, we have a ton of stuff on the horizon, so definitely stay tuned. And with that, we will catch you later.